Good morning, friends. Today, we are looking at a very much undamaged gateway uh, computer um, at the scrapyard. This is a, a GP6450, and it's a Pentium 2 and Windows NT98. Now, what I'm really loving about this thing is just what great a shape it's in this morning. And to be honest, it's got a ZIP 100 drive with a ZIP disk still in it. It's got a TDK CD-ROM drive. It's got a, an old generic, looks like an upgraded once upon a time DVD drive and a really good looking floppy. The case badging is still there. And of course on the back, We've got video and everything integrated on the motherboard. Hello friends, partway through the rest restoration of our gateway GP6450, our Pentium 2 tower find, we have stripped everything down. We've taken four panels off the case. We have an outer plastic, we have the front plastic, we have an outer side, and we have a top piece, plastic. Those have all been thoroughly cleaned and they're going to be repainted in sort of the off-white, gray, bluish um, OEM color that Gateway first put on this, at least as close as we can come. The metal chassis itself has been thoroughly cleaned, deodorized, de-rusted in places. It is sparkly. It is ready to receive the parts that we took off it. It is in really good shape. It is a good looking case, very clean. You could put a sandwich in here and eat it right off. To that end, I've also cleaned and refurbished, checked the caps, tested the power of the OEM power supply. So why am I keeping the OEM power supply? Well, it's 200 watts. It's original to the system, so it's spec for what the system needs, no more, no less. Has a little bit of room from what I can tell based on what a P2 and a one video card and some RAM and a hard drive and a, you know a couple ODD drives use. And it also downdrafts. So this power supply is going to downdraft. It's gonna sit up here and it's going to downdraft on our Pentium 2 CPU with the inordinately large heatsink. So it's semi passively cooled, huge heatsink, downdraft from the power supply. I will also add a fan in the back of the case because I pulled this metal plate out and I'm going to put a standard case fan back here to go ahead and push air out the back of the case. So we're going to get some nice airflow. Not that this Pentium 2 needs a lot of airflow. But I might as well give it all the help it can. And it is pretty impossible to mount any sort of active fan on this type of heatsink. The fins are too far apart. I don't like to use zip ties or anything like that. And um, it's just not in keeping. It's just one more fail point. Then we have the slot one motherboard. It is an auto sensing 66 or 100 megahertz board. It came with 120 meg of 120 megabytes of 100 megahertz RAM, and it will run a P3450. I did test it with one just for fun, and everything works. The OEM CPU works. I also, just for fun, threw a Celeron 333, so I did test it with the 66 megahertz bus speed also. So everything's working up to spec in here. Then we have the Savage 4, S3 Savage 4 AGP card, which tests it and does work. And the intention is to use the onboard Creative Labs audio, even though I have an ISA slot, even though I have PCI slots, I think it's just easier to use the onboard audio with most of the games from that era. I'm also going to add a single Voodoo 2 board uh, video card with this Savage 4. So I get the best of both worlds. I get excellent glide 
and I'll get the um, the metal chrome, uh, I forget what they call it, of this Savage 4 card. So that should be nice. We also cleaned up all of the drives in the system. We have the floppy drive, which works perfectly, and it is sparkly clean. We have the Zip 100 drive, which I did test, and I did make a little shorts video of what was actually on the OEM zip disk that came with it. It was an unused zip disk. This thing is sparkly. The Zip 100 disk that was with it had that little program, 100 uses of your zip drive, and it works perfectly. No click of death, nothing like that. <clears throat> it came with a DVD drive, OE, and the prior owner had added a TDK CD-ROM drive. I'm not sure the speed of this. Um, <coughs> pardon me. It's um, anywhere from a 4 to a 16 speed. Uh, it's a 5200B. Maybe I'll look that up later. Get the speed down. And that's essentially it. We're going to assemble everything in the case, pending the refurbishment of all the plastic panels. Get it all working. And uh, once it's up, go ahead and run some benchmarks and some games of the era and uh, just get a feel for what a wonderful find and rescue operation this gateway system is and will be. And putting this system together will be a three, two, one. So we now have everything put back into the chassis. I can confirm that it boots and runs. I am going to reinstall Windows 98 and probably a separate boot to DOS option. And this is what it all looks like here. Very clean, very clean. And then the one thing we're going to do also is we're going to add a Voodoo 2 card and we're going to pretend like I bought this gateway back in 1998 and this S3 card is great, but I've heard about this Glide. I want to play Glide games. So we're going to get a Voodoo. And back then I would have only been able to afford one Voodoo 2. So we're going to throw a Voodoo 2 in there and then do some benchmarking when it's all put together. Right now, though, you can see... Yeah, we try to cover up some of these scuffs. This side plastic panel was cut and scuffed. But, as you can see in the front, we have a fresh matte flat white paint job on this. And I hope I did some awesome masking here and on the Gateway logo. And I did save the Windows 98 and Pentium 2 case badges also so I'm hoping this all turns out terrific I can't wait to put it all back together and show everybody what it looks like fully restored brand new in brand new condition uh, but I have to wait till you know four or five days till this paint completely cures or I will flake it off and scratch the hell out of it so uh, stand by for more later and here is our final result uh, we can see that uh, the new paint job on the front of the case is very nice and smooth. I do like what happened with the case badging. It kind of made it look like it was originally a gray inset case badge there. We did preserve the Windows 98 and the Pentium 2 stickers. And then the original model number. Um, the drives and everything are cleaned up. We do have a little bit of scuffing on the side of this case. Yep, you almost have to look hard to see it, and the new color is very nice, but you know, we couldn't get all the imperfections out of the plastic from the scratching and the abuse that it did suffer. And mostly, I think, when it was thrown into the dumpster, the metal side of the case is smooth. The paint job came out very nice. And finally, the rear. I had said before that this was a downdraft power supply onto the CPU. Actually, it's an updraft and then an exhaust, and this fan is actually drawing air in. So the way we're drawing the air in is the air in, it'll blow over the CPU and then up through the power supply and then out. So we're getting a good exhaustion of the air inside the case and some fresh air. And then we did go ahead and add the Voodoo 2 card which is connected to the S3 Savage 4 card. And we did wind up going with um, a Sound Blaster 32 with 2 megs of RAM because the 
built-in sound, the drivers just weren't working. And this is a much better option for DOS games of the period. So there we have it. And now that we can see the finished product, we're going to jump right into the benchmarking.